cannot touch. Just we can feel it. If we are talking about the different fairs and festivals of Varanasi, if we are talking about the various philosophy and culture behind making the statue in Varanasi, उसके पीछे जो कला है, उसके पीछे जो philosophy है, that is the intangible aspect. ठीक है ना? वो उसके साथ जुड़ा हुआ है. ठीक है? Okay, sir. Thank you. किसी कुछ पूछना है? No, sir, no, sir. लेकिन उसको बहुत, उसको बहुत मतलब जहाँ से वो बहुत ज़्यादा ये नहीं पढ़ते हैं. Basically, dynasty wise, that is chronological division of the art is there. Then we have the division of the art on the basis of the material. ठीक है? ये जो कि मैंने आपको पढ़ाया है. Then we have the development of the different schools. मैंने schools के बारे में किसी ने बताया था क्या आपको? मथुरा धंधा रामायण मथुरा ये सब बताया था आपको so that is another classification of the art then on the basis of religion I told you Hindu art Buddhist art Christian art we have the Gothic art we have the Indo European art वो सब अलग अलग है ठीक है ना and today I will be talking about the some basic introduction about the architecture and when we define architecture, we know that architecture is the art. Again, you just listen carefully. This architecture is the art of covering space. You see here. Again, here this art is concerned. And what does those art? Whether it is in the form of tribute style, whether it is in arcade style, or whether it is in arcade style. जिसको कि हम अलग-अलग टेक्निक कहते हैं, we call it different techniques of the architecture. सबसे पहला होता है बीम और आपके जो है, so post को लेकर के जो आर्किटेक्चर होता है, बल्ली और बांस को लेकर के, that is tribute style. Then there was the development of the corbelling technique. Corbelling technique what we did? We tried to give a particular structure to give the shape of an arch. By the help of the corbels, so that was the corbelling technique. Then, after the coming of the Mughals, usually we consider that after the coming of the Mughals, there was the introduction of the arch. And you know that after the introduction of the arch in architecture, we have got the beautiful examples of various domes, dome-like structures, tombs, domes, mihrab. All these were. Just possible because of this introduction of the arch in architecture. So these are the basic art forms which are introduced in architecture to understand architecture. So that that is why I told you that again this architecture is an art of covering the space, and we know that the earliest example in the physical form which we can see. Or which we encountered in excavations, they are from the architectural components which we recovered in excavations at various Harappan sites in archaeology. This before that, whatever the architectural information we are getting that are basically mentioned in the literary works like the Rigveda and the later Vedic texts. And during the Mahajanta period, during the epic periods, we have got the examples of many palaces, buildings. Ramayana and Mahabharat में बहुत सारे पैलेस के बारे में बात होती है, बहुत सारे जो है सो जंगलों की बात हो रही है, जंगल में जैसे कुटिया है लोगों के सन्यासी के साधु के, that we are talking about, but we do not have the definite evidence of these art or the architectural specimens with us. But whatever the architectural evidences we are getting in archaeology, that is from the excavations of the various Harappan sites in India, and we know that from the excavated remains, it is very clear that the Indus Valley civilizations it was possessing a very flourished urban architectural phase, and the major cities which were associated with this civilization. They are notable one like the Mondadaro, Rappa, Alibanga, Dhola Vira, and many others. 
so many sites. So Todda is there, Rakhi Gade is there, Tampunal is there, Lothal is there. So many sites are there. And for that you are getting so many examples in the form of the architecture. We have got the examples of the residential buildings. We have got the examples of the granaries. And we know that these granaries or the wells or the residential buildings, they were built up of the different kind of bricks. And these bricks, whether it is in the mature phase of the Harappan civilization or the early phase of the Harappan civilization, they were made up of the brick, this mud one. In the mature phase of the Harappan, they were the baked one or they were the burnt one. Otherwise, in the early phase of the Harappan civilization, they were made up of only the, the sun dried mud bricks. And there was different ratio also that you know. 1 is to 2 is to 3 was the ratio in case of the early Harappan phase of the this architecture. Whereas in the mature phase of this particular great civilization, we come across the size of the bricks as 1 is to 2 is to 4. And beside this, we also get examples of so many other structures like the great bath of Mojidaru. We come across the examples of the different fire altars. We come across the example of the capsidal temples in case of from which side? Can anybody tell me? From which side we are getting the example of capsidal temple in India for the first time in Harappan context? From the site of? Can anybody tell me? Can you listen to me? Can you listen to me? Yes, sir. Are you Yes, sir. So, what is the answer? That first of all, we have to look at the temple of remains for the first time in Harappan context. I will tell you about this when I tell Harappan town planning and Harappan architecture. After that, I will be just coming. I will give you a brief idea about the architecture. That site is Banavali. From the site of Banavali, ये आपको रियाना में है वहां से हमको एक्साइडल टेंपल के रिमेंस इन द एक्सकेवेशन एंड दिस साइट वाज एक्सकेवेटेड बाय आर एस बेस्ट सर अविदर सिंह बेस्ट सर एंड इन हिज एक्सकेवेशन ही टू फाइंड आउट दिस एक्साइडल स्ट्रक्चर व्हिच वाज मोस्ट ब्लाडली यूज्ड एज अ श्राइन और अ टेंपल एंड यू कैन सी हियर द ब्यूटीफुल एग्जांपल ऑफ द डिफरेंट आर्किटेक्चरल Specimens of the Harappan civilization. You can see here these are the streets and how beautifully these streets were laid out by the Harappans. And you can see the these are the examples of the residential buildings made up of the mud bricks or the burnt mud bricks. You can see here. And this is the example of the famous. Can anybody recognize this one? Can you see the pictures? Yes, sir. So, the Kaipur Apokya Haye, this is the famous dockyard of Lothal. And this uh, dockyard of Lothal was excavated in excavation by late Dr. S. R. Rao. And in the, we know that this dockyard, this is the only dockyard in whole of the world history in archaeology that it is giving the evidence of the finding of this particular dockyard. And this dockyard, it says that this example, it exactly this uh, give us the evidence that the Harappans, they had the great, great connections with the western worlds or the contemporary civilizational worlds at that time. So this is that great Luthal, this dockyard. Beside this, other structures you can see here. You can see these are the planning which have been found in the excavations or the remains of the houses or the buildings you can see here. And you can see here, this is the finest example of the drainage system. And we know that this particular civilization was very much famous for its drainage system, for its planning of the houses, planning of the streets. And we know that each and every streets or the roads, they cut across to each other at the angle of 90 degree. So how much well versed 
those people of the Harappan civilization belonging to 3500 BC or 3000 BC, they were well versed with these architectural components or these engineering skills. We can just have a imagination or we can see through the examples from the excavated sites how beautiful those people were, well versed those people were. You can see some of the other examples of the house complexes. You can see here, this is a beautiful example of the well. How beautifully this well was made, made with the help of the burnt bricks in case of the different Harappan sites. And for making the wells, we have using or we are using different kind of bricks. That is the well set bricks. Then coming to after this one, we know that in Indian history, we have a huge gap and after this one, only it is in the Mauryan period that we get a definite account of the architectural remains or the examples of the architecture in this particular period of 3rd century BCE. And for that, when the site of this Patliputra was excavated by Vardal and Spoonan, and in that excavation we know that the IT pillared hall was also for the plan of the IT pillared hall was found out in the excavation and there are very various theories and the various postulates given by the different scholars how this plan was inspired from the plan of the palace at the Susa as well as at Vetna or in the West Asian world at the time of the Achaemenid Empire. And so it is considered or it is just inferred that this plan was taken from that the world of West Asia into the Mauryan period. And for that we have so many examples that we know that when after Alexander the Great in 323 when he died and he returned back to his country and in Babylon when he died and we know that he was a great visionary and along with his with him he used to took with him many people like the geographer, architect, artist with him. So when he died, all these people, they were wanderers, they were homeless and these people, they took shelter into the courts of the Mauryan Empire. And after that one, they came to this Mauryan Emperor's court at the time of basically Ashoka the Great and we know that during the time of sorry, Chandragupta and these people, they had made this beautiful palace architecture in, at Patliputra in the areas of this Bulandibad, when you go to Patna there, you can see the Bulandibad of the Mahar area, you can find how these structures have been just uh, protected by archaeological survey of India. So these are the magnificent example of the architecture in the Mauryan period after the decline of the Harappan civilization. Beside this, we also come across the construction of many uh, this uh, rock cut caves and these caves they are just uh, scooped out or they were constructed for the Ajivika sects which were prevalent at that time during the time of the Mauryas, more particularly during the time of Ashoka and his grandson Dasrat. And these beautiful caves you can see into the caves of Barabar and Nagarjuni, Nagarjuni in, at near Bodhgaya. So whenever you get a chance you can go there and you can see that. And you can definitely see the influence of the local ar this architecture of the this uh, hut architecture or this uh, bamboo and st this street architectural remains evidence you can see in these particular execution of the facade of this Lomas Rishi cave. So there are so many caves there, and by the Sudama cave is there, the Masrasi is the cave is there, Nyadrod the cave is there, then we have the Karna Chopper cave is there, Vishnu Jopare is there, so many caves are there. There are two hills there, Nagarjuni and Barabar, and there you can see that so many these caves they were constructed by the orders of Ashoka as, as well as his grandson Dasra for the monks of the Ajivika sect. This was a particular sect which was prevalent at that time in the Mauryan court. Beside this, we can see the beautiful 
polish technique in the caves on the walls of these caves. So again, this polishing technique, it is said that it was just imported or it was the idea was just taken from the world of the West Asia, that is Iran as well as Persia, of the West Asian world or the Armenian Empire world in this one. Besides this, in the modern period, we come across various pillar capitals and these pillar capitals, the, those which have been found in the different parts of the modern empire, whether it is at Vaishali, whether it is at Ampurva, whether it is at uh, the Sankisha, uh, whether it is at Rumandai, so many places you will come across more than 40 play this, uh, this pillar capitals, they were constructed during the time of Ashoka the Great and we know that there are different parts of this pillar capital. We have the capital, we have the abacus, we have the shaft. Shaft is the this, the cylindrical, this cylindrical, uh, this pillar, then this is the abacus one and this one is the capital, the top. You can see, this is at the capital. And in various kinds of animals, whether it is the horse, whether it is bull, or whether it is elephant, or whether it is lion. So these have been used as the capital for the these modern pillars. So these are some of the beautiful examples of the modern pillars. Then we come across the execution or the making of the so many caves at the western ghats of India during the Ashoka period and the subsequent periods of this Shatmahan, Kushana and the Guptas. And for that we know the examples of many magnificent caves of Ajanta, Elora, Karle, Bhaja, Kondin, Nasir, Junar, Pitalpura and many caves. They were constructed in the basaltic rocks of the western India in the, during the time of the Mauryas and subsequent later king, kings of the other dynasties and we also come across in the form of the architecture the construction of the many stupa during the modern period and the machinated by his own commander whose name was Pushyamitra Shuri and after Pushyamitra he killed the last emperor of this modern dynasty and he established this Sunga dynasty and the main area of his rule was in the Malwa region and there in the form of the stupa architecture that is the Bharat stupa which uh, Sir Alignir Cunningham was able to find out during his time of exploration. This stupa was constructed during the time of the Shunga dynasty people and it is said by the scholars that it was not, it was prior to the Shunga people in the modern period itself its foundation was laid. Later on, the Sunga people they tried to decorate with the various architectural components of the stupa in this particular stupa of Bharat, which is in, uh, which was the ruins of which you can see at the site of the Satna in the Satna district of Madhya Pradesh. Otherwise, all the important architectural fragments of this particular stupa right now they are housed in the Indian Museum Kolkata, and some of the parts they have been sent they were sent at that time to the London also and some parts they are housed in the Allahabad Museum also. So it does, that was the phase of the Shunga period and after Shunga period we come across the construction of the stupa during the Kushan period as well as during the Gupta period also. And Gupta period you know that that was the another period which was very much which is very much remarkable for the emergence of the brick temples. And for the first time, the first temple of this Gupta period, although it was made up of a stone one, that was the temple number 17 at Sachi. And after one, we come across various other, this uh, emergence of the various other temples during the Gupta period at sites like Gitradam, it was Nachna Puthar, it was Bumra, it was that Lalitpur, and then it was at Bodhgaya. And these temples have the different architectural components, architectural elements in it. For example, the earlier temples, it used to have only the Garbhagri as well as the, this Mandapa. Then later on, the, this Pradakshinapath was also added as a main architectural element in the temple architecture. Then there was the emergence of the Ardhamandap. Then there was the emergence of the Shikhar 
and all these components took place in different parts of this one. So, you, so I was talking about the different escapes which we have hewn out or which we have carved or which we have constructed by the various rulers of the modern period as well as the subsequent other Shatavahanas as well as the Kushana rulers as well as the Andhra people in the western ghats of this uh, Maharashtra. You can see here some of the examples here. This is from the cave of the Karale. This is from the Bhaja. And here you can see here the wooden ribs. Still you can see or you can visualize how beautifully the artists or the craftsmen of that particular period, they tried to just make the ribs like a structure in the stone itself. So you can clearly say that this was the influence of the earlier period of architecture in these cave architecture. And you can see here, this is the stupa. And this stupa you can see, you can say that this is the object of worship or the object of veneration in case of this uh, Buddhist philosophy. And these caves were basically donated by some of the important merchants because we know that it relied on the trade route of the Western Ghat. And because of that, we can find out that manufacturing or this uh, construction of the many uh, this uh, raw cut caves in this Western Ghat of India. So uh, I have already briefed you about this uh, Sanchi Stupa number one. And in stupa, we have the structures like the Vedika, this is Vedika, this is Torad, uh, this is this Harmika, and Har Harmika, I, at the top of the Harmika, is the Chhatrayasti or the Chhatravali. So all these architectural terms, you have to keep in mind, you have to see this one, and I will be telling you in detail about all these things. You can see here how beautiful, this is the stupa number two at Sachi and this is the Toran and this Toran basically is the entrance gate and it was made in all the four cardinal directions in the stupas but basically in case of stupa number one only we are getting the four Toranas but in stupa number two there is no any Toran and stupa number three only one Toran we can see and these Torans they were later on just constructed during the time of the Shunga dynasty, Torans and Vedikas. And earlier, this stupa was made up of this mud or the earth. Later on, it was cladded with the stone. And during the subsequent period, this stone was again paved with the help of the bricks. So, these kind of uh, structures we will not encounter only in the North India. In South India also we will find similar kind of architectural elements or the architectural specimens for uh, at different sites like Sanmati, where it is Nagarjanitanda, it is Amravati, Bhatti Polu and many other sites you will come across these stupa architecture which was the main uh, architectural specimens of the Mauryans and the Satvanas as well as the some Pichwaku dynasty people also they contributed a lot and I told, told you about the emergence of the temple architecture in the Gupta period and the, here we can see the earliest evidence of the temple architecture and these earliest temples they are made up of the bricks and only the architectural elements which were prevalent in the early temples they had the flat roof, they had the low plane, they had no any antaral, only the Garabhadri and the entrance was there and these temples they were panchayatam in plan. What do you mean by panchayatam? Can anybody tell me? What do you mean by panchayatam? Aapne meri awaz sun paane ki nahi? Yes sir. sir. So what is this panchayatam plan of the temple? Okay. Can anybody tell me? Panchayatam plan of temple ye hota hai ki agar ek chabutra hai, uske beech mein jo main temple hota hai, uske charo pono pe jo hai, so char alag jo hai, so science bane hote hai. Akar suppose kare ki the main temple is of the Shiva, then the other four temples will be of the temples of the other members of the Shiva family, whether it is Vyaskan, whether it is Parvati, whether it is Ganesh, or whether it is Nandi. So this is known as the Panchayatan plan of temple architecture that I will be telling you in subsequent class of mine. So there was no any gavach or the ventilation in the earlier temples of the Gupta period. 
and first time we can see the emergence of the freestanding sculptures which were the main part of the temple architecture of the Gupta period. So we can also notice the development of the Sikhar during the Gupta period very beautifully and not only this we have got the emergence of the different Dwar Sakhas as well as the relief carvings in the temples of this Gupta period. You can see here these are some of the temples of the Gupta period. This is the temple, the earliest temple or the first temple rather to say of the Gupta period which is of temple number 17 at Sanchi. You can see here this is the temple of this Gupta Vitragao is near Kanpur. You can see here how beautifully at the back of this particular temple various themes and uh, narrations from the various epics and the literatures of ancient text of India have been just depicted here. And this is the famous image of, can anybody identify what is this? Yes sir. Kya hai ye? Sir, no, this no. Or kya hai usme? Lord Vishnu to hai, lekin ko isko kya naam kya diya gaya hai? Aapko to bhi padna ho ga, hypnography bhi padni hai, aapko art bhi padni hai. So you have to identify this one. This is, this is the Sesh Sai Vishnu, Sesh Sai Vishnu or Anant Sai Vishnu. Aap Bhartiya, मतलब जो भी किताबें हैं अपने धर्म की आपने उसमें पढ़ा होगा शिव के जो ये विष्णु के अनेक फॉर्म के बारे में तो उसमें से एक फॉर्म जो है सो वो अपने अनंत जो ये इनका क्या कहते हैं नाग है या शेष है शेष नाग है उसके ऊपर वो जो है सो छीर सागर में ऐसा कहा जाता है कि छीर सागर में तो उसमें वो आराम करते हैं और यही वो दृश्य है और इनके देखिए कि कैसे ओम लक्ष्मी उनको कैसे पाओ को कैसे दबा रही है आप देखिए उनको उनकी सेवा कर रही हैं इसके अलावा जो बाकी जो देवी देवता हैं वो कैसे उनकी स्तुति कर रहे हैं ये पूरा beautifully it has been depicted into the back portion of this particular temple you can see this is Narayan then you can see here this this one Rajendra Moch image you can see how beautifully these images have been carved in this so after this one, we come across the emergence of the various temple architectural activity in the areas of other dynasties or in the during the reign of the rulers of the other dynasties, whether it was Parmas, whether it was Sri Lanki, whether it was uh, the other Kachaka dynasty, so many peoples and for that only we get come across the examples of the many architectural temples, about many architectural specimens in other parts of India, whether it is in Malwa, whether it is in Rajasthan, whether it is in Orisha, or whether it is in Gujarat, and many other parts of India, you come across after this one. And um, in um, Pratihar dynasty was also one of the important dynasty which has contributed a lot in the field of architecture after the decline of the Guptas. And for the Guptas, you can uh, cite uh, many examples of the architecture in case of Vidisha region and there when you go to the base nagar or Vidisha you can see there the so many caves are there and in one of the cave that is the cave number five there you can see <coughs> sorry you can see the beautiful uh, execution of the Varaha image and uh, and who is holding the Prithvi or the uh, goddess earth on her trunk on his trunk and that is beautifully just mentioned there and that has been depicted there in cave number 5 of this Udayagiri caves. And these area of Udayagiri, Vidisha, Sachi, they were one of the important centers for the architectural activities for the Gupta rulers. And after this one, in the Malavas, when the Parmars and the most important king of the Parmar dynasty was the Bhoj, in Bhoj, so you can find out the temple of the temple of the Shiva temple of this Bhujeshwar at this Bhojpur in the Malwa region also there in this architecture. When you go to the Gwalior region, you can see there the temples of the Kachabhat people and the most famous one is the temple of Sasbahu temple 
in the Gwalior Fort. It is very much famous one. And beside this, when we go to the Rajasthan, as well in the Rajputana area, as well as when we go to the Solankis areas in the areas of Gujarat, there you will find the emergence of the different kinds of other kind of this temple architecture. So you can see here. So this was the when there was the change in the architectural uh, these components as well as the architectural elements after the Gupta period, and there you can uh, find out the emergence of the another style in the temple architecture. And you know that in temple architecture there are different three kinds of styles. One is the this Nagar style, then we have the Besar style, and the last one is the Dravida style. And on the basis of the regions of the particular divisions of the different regions of India, these temples have been also divided. And Nagar style of temple you will find in the North India, whereas the Dravida style of temple you will find in the regions of the South India. So whatever the temples you come across into the regions of the Tamil Nadu, this Mahavali uh, Puram or the other, other areas, Madurai, Minakshi temple. So these temples belong to this Dravid style of temple architecture where you will find the elements of the fruit and the sal as an architectural motif in those temples and there you will find the main component of Gopuram as one of the most important component of the temple architecture element in South India. And when we come across the, about the basic style of temple architecture, there you will find that they have the Gaj Prashtakar like the, uh, this roof, the roof of the temple or the Shikhar of the temple is Gaj Prashtakar or it is known as Vegan Vaulted. Gaj Prashtakar means that it is like this, that the hand is sitting there, so that the hand is sitting there, so that the hand is sitting there, so that the hand is sitting there. गर्भगृह का जो सबसे ऊपर का जो शिखर होता है उसको हम लोग कहते हैं उसको मतलब विमान कहते हैं तो और उसी के आधार पे ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दीज विमान डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ दीज विमान दिस टेम्पल्स डिवाइडेड इंटू डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज इन इंडिया और इसलिए वेन यू गो टू द एरिया ऑफ चंदेलाज दैट इज द खजुराहो एरिया यू विल फाइंड द ब्यूटिफुल टेम्पल्स ऑफ दिस चंदेला पीपल देयर Andariya Mahadev is one of the most beautiful temples of Khajuraho. And there, Khajuraho temples, more than 25 temples are right now in Khajuraho. And they have been divided into different groups. And the western group, eastern group, as well as the southern group of temples are there. They were built, built during the 10th century AD by the this Chandela peoples or the people of the Chandel dynasty. So, so this was the uh, case in case of this uh, uh, temples of this uh, central India. So you can see here, I was talking about this one, the shikhar of these temples which were emerging at that time. You can see here, you will find these different kind of shikhar in different parts of India regarding this. In Khajuraho, you can see here, or in Orisha, you will find the different kind of shikhar and you will find the different nomenclature for the different parts of the temple architecture. In Khajuraho, in Orisha, it is known as Nat Mandir, Dok Mandir, or the Rekha Devon. So these are the local terms. Although they are the, <coughs> although they are the main parts of this Nagar temple architecture style itself, but uh, because of the presence of some regional variations, they are given the different names of that. That I will be telling you. About. So I was telling about this particular Mandir of uh, Kachabga dynasty of Telika Mandir at Gwalior Court and this temple is in the port of Gwalior and it is very unique in plan and the name of course literally means Oil Men's Temple. So you can see here how beautifully uh, these temples were constructed by the uh, traders of the Oil Men community and in its conception it resembles more a sign than as a temple as it consists of the sanctuary, only there is neither mandap. So there are different components. You don't have to be confused about all those things because whenever we enter inside a mandir, first of all, we will come across the sopan, then we will come across the ardha mandap, then mandap, 
then we have the antral antral is the vestibule or the passage so which we enter inside to the main temple that is the garbhagriha so and then this is the garbhagriha garbhagriha is the main sanctum sanctorum where the main deity of the temple is just inside so you can see here only uh, is neither mandap nor a pillar pavilion is present in case of this telika mandir of the kachapal dynasty and you can see here it is this it is distinguished by the fact that it was the last attempt to cap a hindu temple by a barrel vaulted roof you can see this is the diman which is the gaj prasthakar or barrel by uh, vault roof structure in the architecture so just i am giving you a background or giving an idea about the emergence of the different kind of the architectural elements in architecture in india during various various period you can see here this is the sas bahu famous sas bahu temple whether it uh, uh, but the actual name of this particular temple is something different one it is sahasra bahu temple it is not sas bahu later on it was just corrupted by the name of the sas bahu bahu and it consists of the two temple one is smaller and the other is very stile uh, this is a larger one and because of that only the people uh, the local people they started calling this temple as the sas bahu temple otherwise it is a temple of vishnu it is known as sas bahu temple so you have the another temple in the areas of this uh, revolution that is the vital jaya temple at bhubaneswar and you can see this was the extension of this telika mandir of this valley for so you have this uh, another temple of parishta that is parshurameshwar temple it is these all are some of the earliest known temple of this uh, uh, particular uh, this uh, after the post gupta uh, period which developed in different parts of india so i have already told you about the emergence of the various temples in the areas of this uh, jodhpur in rajasthan and there the most famous temples of this area you can uh, see in the areas of this jodhpur is the temple of oshia and then we have the temple of the pratihars also and we know that this uh, uh, jodhpur was the capital of the sholanki pratihars in the 8th century and then they have constructed so many temples in this particular temples so you can see these are some of the temples the plan uh, as well as the nine points of the temples of the orissa and how beautifully the various uh, parts of a human body has been compared with the different parts of the temple which i will be talking in my next class as the idea and philosophy behind the temple architecture that will be the first unit of your syllabus so you can see here how it has been compared with the different components of the human body the parts of the human body and the parts of this human this temple architecture has been how beautifully compared by the artist and these are the some of the plans uh, because you have to understand the architecture of any particular temple on the basis of its plan as well as elevation plan is known as the top most view of any particular structure that is the plan and the side view is known as the elevation so you have to keep in mind both these terms plan as well as uh, this elevation to understand any temple architecture in india so these are some of the examples this is the famous example of this uh, temple of khajuraho that is the lakshman temple uh, sorry the kandariya mahadev temple of uh, this uh, uh, khajuraho you can see this is the side view of this particular temple and this particular area is the mandapa here and in some temples of this khajuraho maha mandapas have been also constructed when the number of the people in the priest for the prayer purpose in case of the temple in medieval india or in post gupta period so if this another component in the temple architecture was added that is the maha mandap and this you will find only in case of the temples of khajuraho in central india in chatrapur which is in chatrapur district of uh, madhya pradesh and you can see here and this is the main shrine or the garbhagriha there yeah. and uh, i have already talked to you about the main features of the dravidian temple architecture 
and the main garagri of the evident temple architecture is known as Diman and it, it, it stands on a square base and here and it is a high pyramidal, uh, it is topped by the high pyramidal tower like structure and each story it consists of the boot and the sal that I told you and this is, story is known as Pad and separated with each other by the Prashar. And these all temples of the South India, wherever you get the chance to go to the visit any South Indian temple, you will find that all the temples of the South India, they are enclosed by a wall which is known as Prakar wall or Praka wall. And there was the entrance gate which was known as Gopura. And we know that this Gopura was constructed again with the help of R and the Put. Uh, that is the boot and the sal, both these together, both they are known as R, which I will be just telling you in, when I will be teaching you about the temple architecture in detail. So this is all about the, these are the some of the main uh, features of the elements of the temples of this South India. Then beside this uh, temple architecture, we also come across the different kinds of the construction of the Rathas by the Pallava rulers when we go to the South India, more particularly into the areas of Mahabalipuram and there you can find that on the basis of the name of the five Pandavas, you will find these different Rathas there, Arjun Rathi there, Draupadi Rathi there, Dharmaraj Rathi is there, then Nakul Sadev Rathi is there, then, and different panels are there and these uh, architectures have been taking place during the different rule of the different rulers of the South India and that is why we come across various nomenclature for these styles whether it is Mamala style, whether it is uh, this Mahendra style or whether it is uh, it's Rajasimha style or whether it is Aparajit style. So these are the styles of the architecture in this. When we come to the this uh, areas of Patadakal and Badami there is the emergence of another temple, this uh, architectural uh, this components that is the Chalukyan that is known, we know as the Chalukyan temple architecture and there you will find these kind of temples which have been and these temples of the Chalukyan period basically they were made up of the, made up in the uh, Vesar style of this temple architecture which I have already told you. So you can see here this is the famous uh, Gopuram of this Minarchi temple and you can see these are the various Rathas and you can see this is the famous this temple of uh, at uh, Bredeshwa and uh, this temple uh, built during the Chola empire it is one of the most important architectural achievements of these Cholas uh, of the South India and you can see here this is also, uh, this is also known as Raj Rajeshwar temple and or the Deshwara temple at Punjab and these are the temples of this areas of Patadakal or the Chalukyan uh, temple. So uh, the afterwards there is the emergence of this uh, medieval architecture in India and that we know after the uh, first battle of the Rhine in 1191 and 1192. So the Mughals or the basically the Turks, they established their kingdom in India and afterwards there we see the emergence of the different architectural style in terms of the emergence of the minarets as well as the mosque and the tombs and they had uh, the different plans, they have the different elements in their architecture, they built many folds, mosques, tombs and they had used the calligraphy as the mode of decoration of their own architecture after the coming of these Mughals or the Turks in India. So this was a brief about the main features of the temple architecture in India right from uh, beginning from the Indus Valley Civilization and to up to the different parts of India and the emergence of different architectural styles. So in my next class I will be telling you regarding your uh, first unit 
that is the idea and philosophy behind the temple architecture and the various symbolism and the various meanings of the forms uh, and what is Vastu Purush Mandal and all those things I will be uh, talking to you in my next class. So if you want to ask anything, you can ask. Hmm? Uh, Brahma, you want to Low plinth and high plinth. Low plinth and high plinth. Plinth means what is the meaning Low plinth means the middle of the plinth and the high plinth means the height of the height. Okay? And this is the architecture of architecture. And to go to Adhishthan, you have seen in a temple, then there are shopans. And to go to any temple, you have to go to the Pradesh. And you have to go to the Pradesh. 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 मंदिर का फेस हमेशा पूरा पूरा होता है और उसमें सोपान आपको दो की तरफ से मिलेंगे ठीक है और हमेशा कोई जो भी मंदिर होगा वहां पे आपको वाटर टैंक होगा या कोई वाटर बॉडी होगा और उसके पीछे क्या कारण है ये आपको मैं अगली क्लास में बताऊंगा व्हाट इज द सिंबॉलिज्म बिहाइंड ऑल दिस थिंग्स ठीक है और किसी का स्लाइड नंबर सेवेंटी वन टू सी क्या है उसमें मैं तो अभी केवल आपको एक ब्रीफ बताया है क्या है उसमें सर आई वांट टू टेक द स्क्रीनशॉट क्या है उसमें मैं आपको दे दूंगा ये वाला ये देख लीजिए ये मैंने आपको बताया कि परसों रावेश थैंक यू सर है तो उसका ये है रेवेंस करो ठीक है मेटेरियल के लिए आप लोग परेशान न होइए मैं आपको इतना मेटेरियल दे दूंगा कि आप पढ़ नहीं पाएंगे आप कुछ बेसिक किताब से है द टेम्पल्स ऑफ नॉर्थ इंडिया And Temples of South India. ये दो किताबें हैं, बहुत सस्ती किताब है, मुश्किल से दोनों को मिला करके सौ रुपए की भी नहीं होगी, मेरे ख्याल से। ये दो तो तो विश्वविद्यालय प्रकाशन, and definitely you will get it there. And if you don't get it there, you will take it by Amazon. Amazon से आप मंगवा लीजिए इस किताब को, और ये हिंदी इंग्लिश दोनों में ही अवेलेबल है। These books, Temples of North India and Temple of South India. ठीक है ना आप इसको जरूर अपने पास एज ए टेक्स्ट बुक की तरह आप उसको रख लीजिए ये आपको बहुत काम आएगा ठीक है और एक किताब जो है आपको बहुत बेसिक जो मैंने आपको कहा था इन माई लास्ट क्लास यू विल फाइंड इट एज ए टेक्स्ट बुक दैट इज स्टडी ऑफ द फाइन आर्ट इन इंडिया एंड द बेस्ट बाई एडिट टोमोरी This book will be a Bible for your people because it will cover almost uh, all the persons of your slaves. Okay, आप इसको देख सकते हैं. And uh, there are many other books also which I will be telling you. अलग-अलग टॉपिक पे अलग-अलग किताबें हैं. इतना डिटेल में आपको नहीं पढ़ना है. इतना डिटेल में नहीं जाना है. ठीक है? Anybody wants to ask anything else? अभी जो है मैंने जो पिछली दो क्लासेस में पहले क्लास में और आज में पहले मैं आर्ट के बारे में बताने की कोशिश की मैंने कि इंडियन आर्ट है क्या और उसमें कौन कौन से एग्जांपल है इंडियन आर्ट के कौन कौन से स्कूल है व्हाट आर द मेन फीचर्स एंड व्हाट आर द बेसिस फॉर द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द इंडियन आर्ट उसको कैसे हम क्लासीफाई करते हैं दैट आई ट्राई टू जस्ट से Then today I will try to show you about the various uh, emergence of the architectural components in India, in different parts of India, in various regions and different styles of the temple architecture. So, even if you are subject to familiar karwane ke liye, to what you understand by the art and architecture, this was my lecture. Okay. In the next class, I will be talking about the first year. ठीक है और तो तो थैंक यू सर ओके सी थैंक यू प्रणाम सर हाँ जी क्लास कैसे रही? वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग 
Tapi, cikgu, ah, 